All right, so I am at the Devil's Tower, and this is in Wyoming, so we're out west. And what's so cool to me is that, like, being from Florida, we just don't have, I mean, there's rocks all over the ground. Well, I don't know what that was. There's rocks all over the ground. So when I see these amazing rock formations that have just been eroded away into different shapes and different colors and designs and all this, seeing something like this is just absolutely amazing to me because you've got these big streaks going straight down it. Lines like that in nature are just kind of abnormal, and so seeing a line like that through rock is just really awe-inspiring. And the sheer size of this tower is absolutely amazing. Man, I kind of want to climb it. I'm not sure how doable that is, though. So basically from John's house in South Dakota, I crossed through the Black Hills, and right now I'm in Wyoming at Bighorn National Forest. And um, John is an awesome dude. He packed me a lunch, a couple sandwiches, cheese, a bunch of fruits and veggies, just some good wholesome stuff. So um, this seemed like a good place to, to break that out and eat it. Thank you so much, John. I'm gonna enjoy this. Oh, look at that big, thick cut of ham. Mmm, <laughs> that was so good. But I have seen a little bit of snow up on the top of the mountains. So <laughs> that's not something I'm really used to or prepared for, but. That's what this trip is about. It's about adapting to whatever whatever situation you find yourself in. Oh, this is so foreign to me, but I love it. I don't know if I want to go back to Florida. All right, so I'm just driving down the road and there's moose. There's moose right there. That is too cool. Now moose are like one of the biggest of like the deer family. And apparently they're one of the most dangerous too. But um, give them plenty of room, be respectful, they'll be okay. This is too cool though. <laughs> moose. Man, I'm just seeing like everything. But so far, moose, elk, I mean, I'm in Bighorn National Forest. I gotta see some bighorn sheep. You gotta be kidding me, a badger too. Like, that's the first time I've ever seen a badger. He didn't seem all that tough, but um, he was just running away. But I don't blame him. People probably shoot him for fun. He kind of looked like a, a flat, fat raccoon. <laughs> this place is just covered in deer. I mean, pretty much around every bend, you've got more and more deer. And so um, that's pretty cool that we can see elk, moose, and deer. And I'm not sure what type of deer these are. There's mule deer. I think it might be mule deer. But we can get three of these big, large mammals all within like an hour in Bighorn National Park. That's pretty wicked, like, this is this is all new stuff to me. So this is really awesome. I'm just excited, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go to sleep tonight. Whoa. So I'm gonna hike up to the cliff face, and I think that'd be a really good place to find some stuff. All right, so I'm hearing this weird sound, it almost sounds like a bunch of crumbling rocks or maybe water flowing. And it's just over that ridge there. So obviously I have to go check it out. <laughs> but I mean, there's just so much unfamiliar stuff around here, it's just weird. All right, that, uh, that flowing sound is a lot louder now. I mean, it's just right back there. But uh, I think I've gone over my final ridge, but still, it's pretty far and it's pretty, densely wooded back in here but um i'm gonna try and find it anyway it just seems like the thing i ought to do sometimes i like to put myself in a in a mindset like an explorer or something so when you hear water you gotta go find the water because if you don't you know you could die I made it, I made it to the waterfall. <laughs> it's a little bit disappointing because it's a pretty small waterfall, but nonetheless, it's a waterfall. And it's the first waterfall of the trip. Hopefully I see a lot more of these waterfalls, but uh, if I'd have known it was this small when I started climbing, when I was at the bottom, I don't know if I, if I would have climbed up here. Now check this out. The power of water is just amazing. 
But um, you can see right there, that little dip right up in here, that is where water has been running through probably for a really, really long time. And um, it's just eroded a little notch in the side of the mountain. And so over the next 50, 100, 500 years, that notch is just gonna get deeper and deeper as long as water's flowing through there. <laughs> it's uh, it's time, to, time to head down the hill like a billy goat. Bleh. All right, so that's about the last thing I expected to see up here on the side of this mountain. Um, it's just a little garter snake. That's just kind of funny, and he's tiny. I don't know how big he looked on those close-ups, but he's only about a foot long at the most. I mean, he's a little guy. But, um, I mean, the waterfall is just behind me, and as is typical with garter snakes, he's near water. So that's just that's pretty funny. Last thing, that's about the last thing I would have expected to see up here. I expected to see a mountain lion more than I expected to see a garter snake. Oh snap! That is a pile of fur behind me because something killed an animal. To me, to me it looks like a young bighorn sheep. But um, shoot, you got, you got his jaw bones right here on <laughs> the front teeth. Oh, oh man, this dude got destroyed. And you got. Oh, you just got flies and bugs all over it. And they're helping to break down what's left of the animal, break it down into the soil. Plants will use that, and um, that energy will return back into the earth, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I still have a long way to go. Yeah, I have to get down to that road. But it's all downhill from here.